Hello, today we're going to talk about how to snapshot data in your SharePoint list to use with Power BI. And the use case for this is oftentimes when you have, say, a request list or um, some kind of form, people want to know how many items were overdue or in a particular status at a particular point in time. And what snapshotting does is it lets you basically take a copy of the state of your data um, through time. Usually you do it like weekly or monthly. Um, the other way to do this is using SQL. Um, if, you're use, if your data source is SQL Server or any kind of SQL, um, there's snapshotting you can do in SQL also. Um, and usually if your data source is SQL, you want to be doing your snapshotting in SQL or use um, kind of change history uh, logging instead of um, snapshotting. But in this case, since our data source is a SharePoint list, uh, you will almost never find a data engineer that is willing to set up um, snapshotting for a SharePoint list. So we're going to do it ourselves because it's super fast and easy. Um, you could also use a very similar technique to this for snapshotting um, other weird file sources or data sources like um, Google Sheets or Excel or um, that kind of thing. So um, keep keep that in mind as you're going through this tutorial. Um, you can also snapshot data from your Power BI report, any, any kind of data that is in your Power BI report. Um, the way to do that is to use the um, query a data set card. And I have another tutorial that um, goes through how to do that and then send it an email. But basically, in that case, you would take the return from that query and um, save it to SharePoint instead of sending it in an email. So it's very similar functionality. I'll link that in the video description in case your data source is not SharePoint. But in this case, we're going to be um, snapshotting SharePoint data. So I'm going to show you the, the easiest way to do that. So we're going to want to head over to Power Automate. And if you have a service account to use, which is a, an account that has a Power Automate license and a SharePoint license that is not your account, it is best to use that. Um, that way, if you leave your organization, your flow doesn't stop running. So we are going to create a scheduled cloud flow. We're going to call this weekly snapshot of SharePoint, I should probably capitalize it, SharePoint requests. And I'm going to do every one week and on Monday, create. So we need to get our SharePoint list item data. So we're going to do new step, get items. So we're going to get items from SharePoint here, not get item, get items because we want all the items. And we're going to put in our site here and select our list name, SharePoint requests, and now create C CSV. This step just has you select what you're creating it from, and you want to select this value list of items from your get items step. And under show advanced, this is where you can set the column titles. And I recommend this because the default values for the column titles are not very useful. So this is where we can choose what columns get snapshotted. And you probably don't want to snapshot everything. Um, usually just say the ID, you want the ID so that you can, oops, click into the value field and then click on the ID to insert it. The ID may be assigned to, and I realized partway through this video that um, the fields that I needed to insert here weren't showing up and it turns out that you need to save it after this get items step to get all of your fields to be available here, which is very strange to me, but that appears to be what happens because I saved it and now they're showing up. So for the um, for assign to, we're going to add in, we want to select the specific field from the profile that we want to use. So assign to email is one that I would recommend because that is more of a unique identifier for a person than a name is. And we want to get created 
uh, oops, submitted. So in this case, I renamed my created by field to submitted data. That's why it's coming up differently. So I submitted by department. This is going to be useful for us because people can change departments. So this will give us a snapshot of exactly um, how many by which department were existing at any particular date. We call this submitted by department. You can get submitted by name in here too if you want to. That would probably be a good idea. I'm not going to go through every single one of these because you probably don't want to watch me insert every single one. But um, we also need the status for sure. So status. I'm going to type this in. Status value. We want the status value, not the status. And we need the date needed by. This will tell us if our items are overdue or not. All right. So let's save that. And OK, so what it's doing here is giving us a warning that um, there's no filters on our get items step. So it's worried that we're going to come back with too much data. In this case, I have hardly anything in my SharePoint list. So that's not a problem. But keep in mind that the maximum number of items that the get item step can get is 5,000, but you can do some finagling to have that loop through sets of 5,000 items to get more than that. Maybe that's a future video topic, but um, there's also a place to add a filter in here if you need to add a filter. It's under advanced filter query here. So we're fine though. What we need to do next is do something with a CSV table. So in this case, I think we should put it in SharePoint in a document library, but you could also send this in an email if you wanted to, if you had some particular need for that. Um, so I am going to add a new step. We're going to create a file. And for the site address, we're just gonna do the same site. For the folder path, I haven't made a folder yet. So I'm going to go make a folder to put these in. Go to the document library, make a new folder, create. Now, if I come back here, the folder path will let me select it from our menu. So I'm going to go in here and select that. And for the file name, what I want to do here is use the date in the file name. And actually, I want to put the date in the CSV table also so that there's a snapshot date associated with this. And we're going to add a snap, oops, snapshot date. And we are going to use for that an expression. The expression we're going to use is UTC now. It pops up as we start typing. I'm just going to click on it and click OK. So UTC now is going to get the date and time that the flow is running. And then for our create file step, we're going to use the UTC now. So I'm going to go to expression UTC now. So it's just going to get the timestamp and date stamp. And I'm going to use a concatenate. So I'm going to go to the beginning here and do concat and then parentheses. The concat takes your two strings, comma separated. So UTC now. And I'm going to concat. So let's put it in is it double quotes or single quotes. I can't remember. Probably single quotes. See what happens to me. So we're going to concatenate the dates and making this kind of short because the UTC now is pretty long and then I'm going to go out to the end of this and a comma and I'm going to do another quotes and we're going to do dot CSV. So this is our file extension. This is going to tell it what kind of file to make and I'm going to close my parentheses. So here's my whole formula, concat, UTC now, um, some text, some more text for the file extension. I'm gonna click OK. Did that work? Well, let's try it and find out. So the file content, we are going to use the output from the create CSV table step. 
There we go. Let's see if this works. I'm really concerned about the single quotes versus double quotes. Let's just try it. Um, okay, test. Just going to run this manually and see what happens. And if you click on done here, it actually brings you to the flow step and you can see what it's doing. So the create file, it looks like it did work. So there's our date timestamp and our um, file name .csv. And let's go see if that file exists. It was in documents. So here's a file. There we go. So it looks like I had one with a assigned to blank. That's why there's a blank field there. That's fine. So I'm going to close this and come back here. I kind of want a little hyphen between my file name. Edit it and add in a hyphen between those two. And another comma and click update. Save. Okay, so now I'm going to show how to actually do something with this. So I'm gonna actually run this one more time so that I have two CSV files so you can see how to combine all of the CSVs in a folder. So I'm just gonna test this and by testing it, I mean run it again. Done. Okay, so in Power BI, I have a Power BI report that uses the SharePoint request data. And what I can do here is go to get data from, we go to more and then choose SharePoint. So what we want is SharePoint folder, this one, that's gonna get everything in a folder. And now we need to give it this site URL. And the site URL is this first part of the URL. So the word that comes after the word sites, everything before it. And depending on what your SharePoint architecture is, this might vary a little bit. If you're using subsites still, it might be another level or two down there, but by and large, it's the word after sites. So we're going to paste this in here. Oops. Click OK. And I super recommend doing this in a site that is designated for working with in Power BI. So creating like a Power BI related SharePoint site, and then use that same SharePoint site for keeping a version history of your PBIX files. You can sync the document library and put all of your data sources all in one place. And um, what you should not do is use it on a gigantic site that has millions of files in it, because this particular connector has trouble when you, it, the, it connects at the site level. So if you have millions of files at the site level, it has a hard time pruning that down and um, it, the query time can get really long. So when we connected to that site, um, we have some options. I'm going to go to transform because I need to add a filter before I combine these files because this is again pulling all of the files from my SharePoint site. So we are going to filter this on the folder path and the folder path that we want is, I wish they would make this slightly bigger. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. This first folder is the one that we want. So everything in that folder. And what you could do too is um, also filter it on the file extension equals CSV. That way if somebody accidentally puts some other files in that folder, it's not gonna break a query. And now we can combine these. So I'm gonna click the double down arrows to combine. And what that does is it takes everything in the folder and appends it all together. And um, so every time this refreshes, it's going to go and grab whatever is in that folder and tack it together. And what this does is it creates, so the snapshot date is coming from our CSV file. And right now it's all the same date and different times because I ran both of these today. But generally speaking, what you would have is different dates in here. And you want this to be a date formatted field because that will let you use your date table on it. So we're gonna change the type. I'm gonna go to the home menu and then under data type, date time, I'm gonna change this to date. And I'm gonna do it as a new step. I'm not gonna replace the current because this first step is converting it um, from the um, date time time zone. And if you try and go straight from 
the raw format to date it doesn't work so you gotta kind of have an intermediary there what you would do with this data is you would relate your um, date table to your snapshot date and when you do that you can get a say count of the distinct ids and then if you chart that over time by um, putting your status field in the legend of a visualization you can get a trend in the number of um, items by status over time so you can see if say um, the number of pending requests is growing over time like maybe your velocity on completing tickets isn't quite where it needs to be or if you need to hire more people or whatever um, you could also look at the number of overdue tickets by the assigned to field. So the overdue um, flag would be something where you would um, do a measure that does a count of the distinct IDs um, where the date needed by is less than um, today's date and the status is pending or in process that would give you a measure of number of overdue items then you drop that in a um, visual with the assigned to user so that's the gist of it if that was useful so if you have any questions just let me know in the comments and thank you for watching